AMPS HD3 Seattle, WBMX HD3 Boston, and on AOL Radio and Yahoo Launchcast, CBS Radio's The New Sky. Coach Me Radio presents Fit Your Style with Coach Jennifer Edinger, helping men and women of all ages, shapes, and sizes love the body they were born in. Embracing health, happiness, and confidence. 248 545 Soul. CBS Radio's The Sky. Good evening. This is your coach and host, Jennifer Attinger, of Fit Your Style on this beautiful Wednesday night. And I'm here to welcome men and women of any shape, age, and size to become body confident and do what's right for your health, your wellness, and your very personal best. You can shout out to me tonight because we are live on our line, 248-545-7685, or instant feedback me at newskyradio.com. We will also be live tweeting at handle fit your style, hashtag FYSCBS. And I'm super tickled because we have a dear friend of mine on the show today. Let's welcome Michael H. Ballard to the line. Hi, Michael. Hello. Hello, hello, finally. I am so tickled because I've had the privilege of being interviewed by Michael, and so now we're turning the tables. Ha ha. Uh And I'm super Uh excited. (laughs) Michael is known, just so I can give you a little bit about his background to our listeners, is what I love is he is known as a resiliency tour guide. And he created a very special program called Resiliency for Life. RFL, and he's worked with over 207 organizations across North America, from Bermuda to Singapore to the United States to Canada. And what he's been doing and his gift is helping people such as our listeners deal and prepare or recover from life challenges. And I want to stop there and just introduce to you again, Michael, thank you so much for being on the line tonight. Well, it's an honor to be here, and it's uh, exciting to be here. I'm so, like I said, I'm tickled pink that you're here. Well, thank you. I want to start way, way back because we all know, uh, we've talked about this before. Sure. uh, And and with our listeners as well, there's a string uh, and a thread of commonality with my guests. And what I find is interesting, especially with you and myself, is that from our dark, quote unquote, life experiences, we both found our true life calling. Yes, and yes. when you're going through that, you can't see the forest from the trees because everything exactly. you feel is so dark. So why don't you share with us and take us way back to when you were six and what happened from age six to where you are oh, now? would love to. Would love to. Great. Thank you. Well, as a, as a, as a six-year-old boy, I uh, was a six-year-old boy full of uh, polite rambunctiousness, and I was out learning how to ride a two-wheeler and... Wouldn't you know it, the four-year-old that lived up the street decided to turn and run right in front of me at the last second. And I hit the only rock in the ditch with my head. Ooh. Gave a whole new meaning to use use your head, son, think. <laughs> oh, no. And so uh, it was a new new home subdivision, and uh, it was uh, back in the day before we had uh, the same type of uh, outdoor sewers we have now. So this had ditches, country style. And so down I went the little three-foot incline and over the handlebars when the tire hit the mud and hit the ditch, hit the rock. Anyways, I spent three days in the hospital with a concussion, fading in and out of consciousness for the first day and a half. And uh, it was very interesting to me that my roommate, who also had a concussion, who was also close to my age, I wanted the lights off. I wanted it real quiet and no noise, no movement, because everything hurt. In fact, just talking about it, I could feel a headache coming on. (laughs) Oh, wow. And my roommate, having had a similar head injury, screamed, shouted, and wanted all sorts of attention. And only as an adult did I find out that concussions either agitate you or shut you down. And, of course, I was shutting down. I didn't want any light. They had to look in my eyes every hour. I wasn't allowed to sleep more than 50 minutes per hour. They wake you up, look at your the size of your pupils to make there was no bleeds. Of course, there was, I'm, I'm old enough there was no MRI or CAT scans back then. So that was one of their very basic tools. And that really got me on this path of human behavior. At six years old, it was like I just couldn't believe that somebody else could have a similar issue to me and want to do the complete opposite. So luckily, I was raised in the house not to judge, but I was trying to understand. And so fast forward 
11, 12 years. I'm 17. I come down with a chronic illness, a bowel disease, and I stumped the doctors after the first year because then it faded away. And yet under the microscope, I was really sick. And with hindsight, it's possibly the martial arts I was practicing has a lot to do with what the research says. When you have a chronic illness, yes. you should be doing moderate to intermediate exercise. You should be yes. practicing a lot of breathing skills to be to practice some meditative skills and mindfulness skills. You should be framing and reframing. Is it an illness or is it an opportunity to learn how lean and keen this body of ours we're all given can be? None of these things are a cure, but it helps to manage the quality experience. So at the time, between the concussion and the chronic illness, I didn't realize it was setting me up for bigger things. I graduated from college. I got my, got my first career position before I graduated. I was real excited. I got a company car. <laughs> and then a couple of three years into that career, I suddenly got the flu one day. And, yeah, no biggie. I always call flu and cold an immune system tune-up. And every couple of years, it's probably a good thing to get a tune-up. And then suddenly, I'm sleeping. 18 hours, 20 hours a day. I was like, uh-oh. So I, after three days, phone the doctor, make an appointment, go see them the next day. They go, Michael, how, how many hours of sleep? I said, Doc, it's all I can do to get out of bed. And it's like, well, that's not normal flu. Anyways, they took some tests, and lo and behold, within six weeks, they discovered that I had uh, cancer. Oh, no. And all my homework to that point started to pay dividends. My gastroenterologist, my surgical team, my medical team all said, Michael, you're doing so well psychologically. What are you doing? How did you get this far? And that's when I started to realize that between my family upbringing and what I'd learned from the concussion and the chronic illness, it had led me up to that point to have a sense of mastery despite what was going on around me. And well, the news after three weeks after surgery when the test came back was, well, good news is we think we got it all, but the bad news is you had cancer in four locations. Wow. So we have to keep an extra special eye on you. And then six months out after, the, after I started to recover, the bad news was, oh, we gave, you, we gave you blood donations from four people, and there's this new thing out there called AIDS. We're going to have to keep a really close eye on you. Oh. So for 15 years, I went for tests. In the beginning, every eight weeks, and then it was every 12 weeks for a few years, and then it was every every four months, and then it was twice a year, and then it was once a year. But, boy, the first couple of years I'd go and get blood tests, the technicians would look at my paperwork, and they'd come back all gowned up and suited up like they were going to the moon. It just made you wonder, hmm, what's going on? Of course, the reality Michael, was people weren't too sure what was going on. If I can interject for a minute, how did you – deal with that uh, that fear when you saw them oh. suit, suited on well one of the one of the gifts that uh, I got from my uh, martial arts practices was that they talk about being in the moment if you if you start to focus only on the past or the future you'll never do well in the moment so I couldn't change what had happened I couldn't fix anything I certainly found out that life insurance, after you've had uh, surgery and transfusions, it certainly changes. I already had some, and uh, the day I got the diagnosis, I literally had, that was a Friday on the Monday, I was having the life insurance guy come by to buy more. as a little late. Mm -hmm. But at 26, who thinks you need to, uh, you know, rush these things? So I was uh, learning to be mindful and be in the moment, and it was a very powerful skill set. And don't think for a moment that there wasn't tears and angst and frustration. And as I started to recover, I also am a big believer in theme songs. So I had several types of music. One of the songs was to help me decompress and have a good cry. Because you have to be careful about locking down your emotions for too long a period of time when you're under big stress. One of my theme songs was to pick me up, dust me off, point me in the right direction, and get my mental, physical, and emotional butt out the door to get on with life. Uh, one of them was just to be calm and quiet and serene. And for those that know me, including Jennifer, who's shared space in the same room with me at different things, I love life. I can get wound up pretty quick. <laughs> so learning to be calm more frequently, more often, and deeper calmness, if you will, 
as I like to tease when I teach it, from the tips of my toes to the tip of my nose and all points in between. How do you do that? So music for me is one of the ways to soothe that inner being of mine or to soothe the savage beast, as somebody, it was one of my friends said, <laughs> said I didn't know I was a beast. They said, Michael, we're speaking in generalities. So those, the, the calmness, the music, the mindfulness, was a real powerful time and it paid huge dividends. And, you know, Michael, when we when you share that, you talk about the power of the mind, um, yes. mind over matter, the exercise with your illnesses, uh, with the illnesses that I have had. You know, there's such a correlation out there in the holistic world, so to speak, that if you follow these key, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, strategies, for lack of a better word, that these can truly help you get healthy. And yes. time and time again, and I'm not saying that modern medicine does not have its place at all. It certainly does. But in my case, and I know also in your case, it's incredibly powerful that we are so, um, quote, unquote, healed uh, because of implementing these holistic views. You talked about your martial arts background. And so for our listeners that are out there that are fatigued and they're feeling sick, and I know we're going to go into uh, very much in detail your program, but... I don't. It's challenging for me, and maybe for you as as a leader as well within this industry. That most people just want that quick fix. Just yes. give me a pill. Let, the, let me just take it so I can feel better. And we both know that they're masking so much of really what's triggering them into their mm-hmm. illness. So, what words of advice do you have for people that uh, haven't really implemented this holistic view before? Oh well, first of all, we live in a society of quick fix. I have to confess right now that I have a marketing education, and I was very good at it. So when I got a chance to sell tobacco, with deep respect to our First Nations and First uh, Native American friends, ceremonially, there's a place for it. But every day, as, as a habit, I couldn't sell it, because if I'm going to sell it to you, Jennifer, you're going to buy a lot of it, okay? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the things I've learned is that we live in a society that wants to manipulate us, not persuade us, into doing things. If we just drive the right car, wear the right cologne or perfume, wear the right shoes, we're just smarter, sexier, more successful. And as much as those things are fun to have and do, and there's nothing wrong with some of those things some of the time, but that's not who I am. Those are additions to me. So I would say to your listeners, one of the keys to start to manage our health, and I don't profess that anything I did cured me, but everything I did certainly helped me manage the quality of the day-to-day experience, and surprise, surprise, and no surprise, helped manage the quality of the outcomes, and that's in part by choosing to define who I am. So I could be Michael who had a concussion, woe is me, Michael who has a chronic illness, or sad sack Michael, Whoa, double woe is me, and oh, I almost died from two bouts of cancer and a failed medical procedure, and I had to have a surgery on my birthday at midnight one time. This is terrible. And those are all valid points, but I don't want to live in that woe. I want to acknowledge that it's okay to feel run over, but then let's go back and go through that, that, those, those episodes and how I've allowed them to define me and redefine them as required over time. So the chronic illness me, bloaty, oh my gosh. One young lady friend of mine when I was back in high school said, Michael, you're the only guy I know that understands bloating. (laughs) Because I had fat pants and my skinny pants. I understand that. And back in high school, I was so skinny, you could see all my ribs up the side of me. I took my shirt off, and I was just a skinny kid. Mm. Partly because of my my energy. I got lots of energy, so if we're going to do it, let's do it double time. And why not three times? Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's running around the track or going to help a friend move, let's do it. So choosing to define ourselves is an ongoing process. So I love stuff. I love food. I have chosen to define myself as a 187-pound man. Michael, I'm going to have you hold that thought because we're just going to stay tuned. You're listening to Fitcher Style and Coach Me Radio. We'll be right back, and we're powered by CBS. 
Vima Nutrition is the foundation for optimal health and well-being. Our fast-paced lifestyle and daily stress leaves little time to prepare healthy meals to ensure our daily nutrition needs are met. Try our no-risk offer today at fitnessradiooffer.com. Vima Nutrition is simple. One complete, clinical-tested liquid nutrition formula that provides you necessary vitamins and minerals so your body can perform and maintain your best health. Also learn about our award-winning energy drink called the Burr. Fitness Radio Offer com provides you a no risk offer to try Vima. Register to win a free supply at fitnessradiooffer.com. One of the benefits of Vima is the food source mango steam. High in antioxidants, dubbed the super fruit and queen of all fruits. Learn more about this power food at fitnessradiooffer.com. Go to fitnessradiooffer.com and register to win a free one month supply of Vima at fitnessradiooffer.com. Hurry while supplies last. Vima Nutrition is the foundation for optimal health and wellness being and we offer you a chance to win a free month supply. This Vima offer is for a limited time at fitnessradiooffer.com. Yes, radios, the sky. The sky. Now back to Fit Your Style with Coach Jennifer Edinger. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Call Jennifer now. 248 545 7685. Believe. I am beautiful. Welcome back to Fit Your Style. I am your host and coach, Jennifer Edinger, helping you take charge of your life to become body confident and do what's right for your health wellness and your happiness to become your very personal best please remember our phone lines are open and we'd love to hear from you at 248-545-7685 or instant feedback me at newskyradio.com 
I also want to thank our radio sponsor, Vima. Vima is an Altai Premium Antioxidant Supplement, and they have a very special offer for you right now at fitnessradiooffer.com, only for our listeners, of giving you a free trial of this Altai Premium Antioxidant Supplement drink. What does Vima stand for? It stands for vitamins, essential minerals, mangosteen, and aloe. And the benefits are protecting and supporting a healthy heart, enhancing the immune response, which we've been talking about today on our show with Michael, creating abundant energy, fighting against free radicals, promoting good vision, supporting a normal, healthy intestinal tract, and maintaining healthy skin, eyes, teeth, gum, and hair. So please take advantage of this free trial offer at fitnessradiooffer.com. And on the line, we have Michael Ballard. Thanks for being on the line, Michael. Great to be here. And you were sharing with me about uh, defining oneself. Can you go into yes. that a little bit more after, because we had a break? Absolutely. Thank uh, you. I, I, say, I used to teach career search to people who had been long-term unemployed, not often through any fault of their own, but when the economy was bad, it was bad. And so we had people who were coming back to work after stabilizing a health issue, after an accident, for a host of reasons. So one of the things we did to help them, see their situation in a new light was I would, we did an exercise I called the dictionary exercise. So if there was a picture of you in the dictionary that only you can see, and it's confidential, so only you could see it, what are the words, the thoughts, the phrases, the pictures, the music, all the senses there that you've allowed to be there? Some of them you've put there on purpose. Some of them other people put there, and you haven't taken out the trash. Some of them should be there. The reality is that we all have different skills. So I'm blessed musically that I'm a a decent piano player. I haven't practiced for a while, so maybe not so good. But So under my self-definition is entertaining to play Christmas songs. It's the truth. And whether it's a group of 3-year-olds or 93-year-olds, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Other truth does not play classical music very well. It's the truth. So those are small truths, but they're still important to know about yourself. So some people, though, along the way, get told some lies about themselves, and it's really important we go in over time and purge, throw them away. At one point, somebody with good intention said, oh, you're no good at math. And gosh, golly, I had a 10-year career in sales, and they said, Michael, your math is so easy to understand with our clients, and I helped a national firm get a whole bunch of extra customers that they hadn't been able to get for 30, 40 years because I would go in and use basic math because I knew that math was tough for some people. I was no math genius, but I was a solid 70% with hard work, and I would present it to people who had other gifts in their business and say, we should talk because we believe this is what sort of money we could help you make if you invest this time and this amount of money. And so my self-definition, luckily on math, got turned around by a math teacher who said, Michael, I know you got a 52 in math with that teacher, but I believe you have great skills in business math, and I want you to come to my class and take my class in math for grade 12 because you have business math skills. So self-definition, it comes about from all the interactions we have with other people, and it forms our belief system. It's part of our belief system, but if it's based on falsehoods, for example, my chronic illness, there's nothing you can do, said the first medical professional other than my family doctor, and if you're not careful, you can you can start to have what I call the Eeyore system, Eeyore complex. Oh, bother. I have a chronic illness, and there's nothing I can do. And that's a slippery slope into helpless and hopeless where nothing changes because you're not doing anything except dwelling on the negative aspects. You're so where right. Where my case that. was at the extreme end of silliness, oh, bother. I have to have two sets of pants. Oh, hey. I get to buy more pants. I like my fashion. So self-definition, whether it's the serious things about you or the little things, it's really important to look at. I was at a major event in Toronto as a fundraiser for a, 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 an international organization, and one of the presenters, I asked permission because I was there to help and support as a volunteer, and I said, I think we should take your picture. And she looked at me and said, don't bother it's a waste of time. Oh. I'm not worth a picture. Oh. You could have knocked me over. Wow. So, pardon Sad. me? 
well, I don't take a good picture. My own mother will tell you that. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm either being manipulated or this person's self-definition is really bent out of shape. Mm-hmm. So advertising plays on our self-definition. They want us to enhance our image, our feelings about ourselves if we just buy their product or experience. Absolutely. I say do that, but do it on purpose. Do it knowingly. So that's a bit about self-definition. You uh, hit the nail on the head because you're talking about what I call false beliefs. And yes. those false beliefs over years upon years of being told them or just formulating them on your own become your, your new truth. Yes. It's not truth. They're false beliefs. And you know, as the coaching that you do and the coaching that I do, you have to gently start peeling those layers back and really start doing work on oneself to be able to expose the real you. And just like you said, define that real you by yes. washing all these false truths off your back and off your mind because yep. again what we uh feed in terms of our mindset f- affects so much the cells in our body as we both uh, oh, know totally you know there's that saying what you think about you bring about and yes. you talked about the eeyore syndrome i definitely had the eeyore syndrome and it wasn't until i saw billy blanks on tv who truly changed my life and i had that aha moment because I'm lying, staring at the ceiling tiles, going, I've become my branded illness. I was so wrapped up in my illness, and I'm sure there's a lot of listeners out there that aren't feeling well and have been labeled certain illnesses, or they're so fatigued. And you become that brand of that illness. And so I'm so excited that you are on with us for this hour, because I know we're going to talk about ways that we can get over that hump of branding oneself in that way and start relieving and getting releasing those layers of negative false truths. Um, yes, because yeah, the false truths, they slow us down. They completely stop us. They waste us. They drain our energy. Absolutely. They're exhausting. They stop us from achieving the success we deserve if we put in an honest effort. Oh, it's so true. So true. We have about two minutes until our, fir- or our next break, and I okay. want to make sure that we have enough time to talk about this, because not only have you gone through having a chronic illness, you've had your cancer, not one time, but two times, I believe. Yes. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, but it was twice. You also had an, an additional traumatic experience. Oh, boy, um, did I ever. I've shared one similar, uh, but not nearly to the extreme that you did So, as a ch- young child. So I would love to hear um, you share this with our listeners because I just want them to see how truly resilient you are and why you're the perfect coach for teaching people how to overcome uh, stressful situations and challenges in one's life. Well, okay, I will. Thank you. Well, a long time ago, I had a chance to work at uh, a large gas station to use an old term and I was really honored and privileged that I was the youngest person ever brought on that was allowed to drive the tow truck and the snow plow now it might not sound like a big deal nowadays but back then you had to be 21 minimum preferred 25 but at 18 I had the experience privately plowing snow so I was brought on they saw I could do a job do it well so they promoted me to be tow truck driver well from that it led to be site supervisor and on my first day of site supervisor didn't we have a motorcycle gang come in and rob us? Wow! How uh-huh. terrifying. So when you say think about what you bring about, think about you bring about. Well, my my training about being in the moment without judgment. I grew up in a family where gangs were considered less than. If you joined a gang, what was wrong with you? We didn't know as much back then. However, I do know that I don't like sixteen people showing up to rob twelve. 16 and 17, and I was old. I was 18. I was the mature one. And so I stayed in the moment. I managed to use distraction. Uh, The boss didn't get a say because he locked his door and hid under his desk. Got to love him but not like him for that behavior, so much for him being in charge. And so I got out the keys to the company's storeroom and said, "Uh, you guys need any taillights? So I used distraction. Mm because it was the only thing I could think of. I had four young ladies in self-serve who were all cuter than cute. Uh, I'd read about what motorcycle gangs were capable of when they were in ugly moods, and Mm -hmm. I thought, I don't care if they clean the place out, leave the people alone. We can replace stuff. How terrifying. And they were rather confused by that, but they stole another 200 bucks. (laughs) Oh, 
<laughs> and uh, took off and didn't pay for their forty dollars worth of gas either. And that was that. And I wow. promptly went home and threw up from nerves, but everybody stayed physically safe. They poked me under the ribs, and I have a little tearing of my peritoneal sac. So every few months, I get a little burn there. It reminds me of the old days. But uh, I, I, by staying in the moment and not overreacting, by not calling them what I thought of them, and just going, you think so? Really? Okay. And some would say I went with the flow. Now, if they'd have started attacking people, I don't know what I would have done, but I would have done something. But wow. I just kept using distraction. Wow. And, and that stays so, with you. And you talk about that physicality that you have, that you know, above your ribs and constantly, fe- you know, you have that little feeling that tingles once in a while just as a constant reminder. Yep. Uh, when I was a child, I was in f- uh, fifth grade. My parents got divorced. My house was completely stripped and robbed by three separate uh, sets of robbers from professional wow. who took it to the street gangs to the teens. Um, I lost my dog all in the same day. It was absolutely just terrific. I mean, uh, not terrific, terrifying, uh, horrific at such a young age. And you talk about that, and we're going to get into this after the break, being resilient and how do you overcome what you went through in front of all of these motorcycle gang members. And, you know, me as a young child with my whole life was ripped apart at nine years old, ten years old. Um, yep. And I know that we have so many listeners probably that, of course, we either are in a crisis, coming out of a crisis, or we know someone in a crisis um, that we can coach and mentor them within you know, the next half, how, half hour of our show to how to overcome and deal with those issues, right? Right. Learn those key tips on uh, overcoming them, which is so, so important. Because otherwise, do you not agree, Michael, that – Again, like we talked about becoming a branded illness, that some people just get caught up in that horrific experience and they can't pull themselves out. Yes, and we have to be careful because some caregivers with good intention, whether they're the the accredited ones or the informal ones, start to put you in a box and stick you on the shelf. Yes, exactly. I'm going to have you hold right there. One minute. We are listening to Fit Your Style on Coach Me Radio on New Sky Radio, powered by CBS. Feng Shui for the soul. CBS Radio's The New Sky. New horizons, no boundaries. NewSkyRadio.com There's a kitty in me.
CBS Radio's The Sky. The Sky. Now back to Fit Your Style with Coach Jennifer Edinger. I am beautiful no matter what they say. Call Jennifer now. 248-545-7685. Jennifer Ettinger here on Fit Your Style, and we are a show with a heart, welcoming men and women of any age, shape, and size to finally take charge of your life to become body confident. Because it's not about being a certain size or look, but it's really about doing what's right for your specific health, your wellness, and your happiness to become your very best personal best. We still have time to take your calls at 248-545-7685, or you can instant feedback me as well. So please let us hear from you. We'd love to take your questions. And I want to thank our radio sponsor, Vima. Again, Vima is an all-type premium antioxidant supplement. Michael, I know we're going to talk about the importance of fueling your body. And with yes. Vima, it covers that tremendously. You take a two ounce, and this is incredible. Just sit back, listeners, and Michael, until you hear what's in this two ounce shot that you take on a daily basis. So sure. again, Vima is your vitamins, your essential minerals, your mangosteen, your aloe. It's uh, physician formulated. It's been clinically studied. It would take about two oranges, nine avocados, three stalks of broccoli, 55 eggs, one cup of spinach, three cups of peas, 19 bananas, 62 ounces of cheddar cheese, 5 large potatoes, 61 cups of tomatoes, 2 large watermelons, 17 ounces of cherries, 37 mushrooms to provide the vitamins, the minerals, and the antioxidant power of a 2-ounce serving of Vima. Wow. Well, the, cheese, the cheese and the bananas are two of my favorite fuels. <laughs> there you go. Well, you're getting so much more in addition to that. And you can actually get a free trial offer for our listeners if you go to fitnessradiooffer.com. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. So let's talk about fueling the body. And then I do want to jump right into, after that, Michael, let's go into what your whole focus is in terms of the Resiliency for Life program that you have. Okay. Okay, so fueling your body. One of the things that really intrigued me when I was very ill was at some point I was on chemo and no eating because I had to recover from surgery. So you, if, you're, if your digestive tract's been operated on, it has to heal. So you can't put food through the system because it gets in the way of the healing and it might uh, cause infection. So I got down to 137 pounds and I really... Wow. Experts would tell you I should weigh at least 169, 170 minimum, and uh, I'm real comfortable with 187, 188. Although your listeners can't see me, I also, on a path of mastery and excellence, not perfection, because to me perfection's an illness. Mm -hmm. I allow myself to be 185 to 194. So if I'm a little over, I call it my seven point spread, my seven pound seven point spread. But that's me. And when you get to be this size, it doesn't matter as much. If I weighed 98 pounds, I'd probably have a three-pound spread. So the fuel, one of the things I saw was that so many people had no energy at all when they were in, after they were allowed to eat. And I'd say, well, what are you eating? Oh, well, just the hospital food. I said, have you asked the doctor if you can eat other things? Can you drink tea? Can you drink coffee? Now, different people think that different things are bad for you, good for you. Well, I'm not here to argue that. In moderation, I love mango juice. It just is, it just, oh, my body seems to love it. So it's good on the taste buds. My body loves it. Why not? So hydration, fuel. I was at a coaching course a few years ago, and in the room was a lot of six, well, 14 to 21-year-olds and then a lot of volunteer coaches, and I was taking a coaching course because I thought a, a coaching course for physical coaching for, for, for phys ed would be a different perspective than the business coaching course I took. I was surprised that I knew more about diet than most of them. And it's like, now, wait a minute. You're a provincial-level athlete, and you're 21, and you don't know any of these things. It's like, wow, what type of coach have you had so far? So fuel, part of it is the drink that's support, you know, advertising for the program, mm -hmm. what, what is out there and how does it work for you? I have somebody trying to convince me I should take a certain product. I said, well, it's a great product, but I have a digestive tract issue, and your product 
despite high nutrition, not yours, just to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, can be a laxative for me, and I don't need that as an issue. Right. I have no large bowel left because of colorectal cancer, so I need to make sure that what I take is calming and soothing and slows me down, not speeds me up. Right. It's, I could get a net benefit at one end <laughs> and have three negatives at the other end. Right. So what fuel is good for you? And I'm, I drive some dietitians nuts, but I always talk about the 19 over 21. I think I should eat 19 incredibly healthy, lean, keen meals a week because my diet, my body weight, my fitness levels are all above average, I'm told by the experts. And so what two meals a week do I eat moderately but eat anything I want within reason? So what I eat three slices of pizza when I really should only eat two? My weight's within seven or eight pounds, two to three percentage points of what it should be. So it doesn't matter. So how do you gift yourself with the fuel you consume? How do you moderate? How do you m modulate? So I make sure that every morning I have a large mug of tea. And if anybody knows me on Facebook, I always talk about tea's on, kettle's made. It's just my way of saying good morning. Mm -hmm. But for me, a big mug of tea helps hydrate me in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's not super strong, but it's not just brown water. It's tea, black tea. <laughs> yeah, it has great benefits to it. So that's a fabulous oh, choice in the morning. And, absolutely. And, that's great. And then I eat my meal, take my nutritional supplement. And then uh, a few minutes later, it's coffee time. And that's my one personal item I love. I have extra low blood pressure to the point where experts have told me, Michael, your blood pressure, it's so low. I go, it's genetic. Those two numbers, real similar to what my dad's were when he was in my age category. Oh, so coffee or two or a day, no biggie. <laughs> so fuel to me is really important. It's a partly a choice and something we should learn to do. I'm a big advocate of multigrains because they break down at different rates in your body. So whole grain, multigrain products are good for me. I'm the guy that eats the, the skin on the potatoes because not only is the potato good, but a couple of experts have told me sweet potato skins and regular potato skins have more goodness than just the potato. That's right. Yeah, so I've heard that. I'm not trying to be a nutritional expert for the world. I just wanted it for me. Because mm -hmm. when I get the right fuel, the world's better. Absolutely. It's amazing what happens, like I said before, when you fuel your cells, when you fuel your mindset, whether it's your quote-unquote diet, and I don't mean dieting, but your food choices and your yes. mindset, how you can completely change your life. It's so oh, incredible. I, I go to physicals at my doctor's, and he's a man of about 40 and I really love to stump him because when he was 37 and I was uh, more than 10 years older than him, he said, you know, at your last physical, I know chronologically you're more than 10 years older than me, but you're physically actually in better shape than the average 37-year-old in North America. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's not that hard. I try to walk a lot of stairs three to four days a week, do some intensity, so... Jennifer, of course, you teach people how to be very fit. I talk about being very toned. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of medical clips in me, and it hurts if I'm too intense with my exercise. So swim, stairs, walk briskly, work up a sweat, and have fun. And I completely agree with you. As a fitness expert, um, you know, I don't swing so heavily to one side at all, Michael. So, for example, with my health issues, and I think this is really important for our listeners to know that uh, my issues – I, even though I'm certified in uh, Pilates yoga, you know what? We're going to go on this a little bit further when we get back. We just have to take sure. a quick break. Uh, but you're listening to Fit Your Style on Coach Me Radio, powered by CBS. We'll be right back. Vima Nutrition is the foundation for optimal health and well-being. Our fast-paced lifestyle and daily stress leaves little time to prepare healthy meals to ensure our daily nutrition needs are met. Try our no-risk offer today at fitnessradiooffer.com. Vima Nutrition is simple. One complete clinical-tested liquid nutrition formula that provides you necessary vitamins and minerals so your body can perform and maintain your best health. Also learn about our award-winning energy drink called The Burr. Fitness Radio Offer 
Fiverr.com provides you a no-risk offer to try Vima. Register to win a free supply at fitnessradiooffer.com. One of the benefits of Vima is the food source mango steam. High in antioxidants, dubbed the super fruit, and queen of all fruits. Learn more about this power food at fitnessradiooffer.com. Go to fitnessradiooffer.com and register to win a free one-month supply of Vima at fitnessradiooffer.com. Hurry while supplies last. Vima Nutrition is the foundation for optimal health and well-being, and we offer you a chance to win a free month supply. This Vima offer is for a limited time at fitnessradiooffer.com. CBS Radio's The Sky. The Sky. Now back to Fit Your Style with Coach Jennifer Edinger. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Call Jennifer now. 248 545 7685. Believe. You are tuned into Fit Your Style, and I'm your host, Jennifer Edinger, coaching you to take charge of your life in health happiness and confidence and we are still on with michael ballard who hello. is our tour guide hello michael hi our resiliency tour guide and we were just talking before break and it's so important for our listeners to embrace what we're about to share uh, because we beat ourselves up so easily and so as a fitness professional i want to share and also through my own health experiences and michael you as well what you've gone through that not every form of exercise is for every person out there. And we get caught up in infomercials and hot buzz products. And again, like you talked about, Michael, a lot of the media pushing what's so hot 
I go on TV. I talk about what's hot in the industry. But, you know, really take advantage of either doing a trial class, really looking into the method of the fitness, and truly finding what works for you. It doesn't matter if it's hot or not. It, it's irrelevant. You want to find what truly will work for your body so you're consistent. So, again, yeah, even oh, if some – go ahead. Totally, I, I totally agree. And what I see happening is that people that have had a big controversy with their health or an adversity with health, or perhaps it was an accident or an incident, they let the medical professionals who with good intentions say things to me like or did say things to me like, oh, Michael, after all you've been through. So we have to gradually – carefully, with expert opinions, push back, move forward, break down those barriers. At one point, I took an Outward Bound Leadership Wilderness course, which was 10 days in the bush, canoeing, rock climbing, because I'd had seven years before that. For seven years, I had on and again, off again cancer surgeries. When all these surgeries, the experts would have you believe I should have maybe gone on long-term disability or, you know, stayed at home and got a little job at the local store and sat at a stool all day punching people through the cash register. And that's definitely an opinion. And for some people, maybe that's exactly what they have to do if they've had severe. But we got to find the exercise programs that work for us. I remember an expert saying, what do you care about being fit for? You're fighting cancer. I said, you're putting chemo into my veins. I need muscle tone to help support that. Oh, don't worry about it. Well... <laughs> If you have strong arms, you can find your way around a hospital bed a whole lot easier than if you don't have strong arms. I just find the helplessness and hopelessness that some people with good intentions give away to those of us going through stuff, rational, emotional, or physical, to be dangerous to the quality of the uh, process and the outcome. So when you said find an exercise that works for you, I, I couldn't agree more with you. I'm so glad. And I know I have another inspiring story that I want to touch upon, and then I want to dig deep in, within uh, you know the few moments that we still have left of the show to really get into more of your programming. Uh, make sure that we cover that off for our listeners. But you know the power of social media. We both know it. We could talk about this for an entire show, which we're not going to do today. No. But I did have a gentleman reach out to me um, who weighs six hundred pounds, yeah. and he is ready to change his life. And he's ready for us to work. We have a whole team ready to go forward with him. Good. And he's ready to do whatever he needs to from his bed. So I wanted to share this story because here's a gentleman who spent the majority of his life, who's in his 50s, in bed, who's finally, God love him, has had his aha moment. And he's ready to do whatever, like you talked about, whatever arm workouts that we are allowed to share with him, whatever he's able to do once we have everything cleared in terms of medical clearance yeah. from his bed. So if you're right. a listener out there that is, again, fatigued or tired or keep talking about, and I hate talking and weight loss pounds, but if you're thinking I still have five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it may be, I want you to think of this particular gentleman who weighs 600 pounds, who found his aha moment. And I encourage every listener out there to get in that quiet space like Michael has talked about with the music and really start thinking internally. And I hope, and the reason why I do this show every single week and bring on sub gifted people like yourself, Michael, is that our listeners have that aha moment and start that small stepping stone. Yes. Well, it, it, it's doable. It's doable. At one point, I was so weak, the only exercise I did was wrist exercise, wrist building exercises with those little hand squeezers. Because my thought was in the course of a day, if I can use the gentle ones and do sets of 10 and get up to 90 hundred of them, at least from the elbows down, I'll be in shape. <laughs> and when you weigh 137 <laughs> yeah. pounds, you got to have something that's in shape because I was as weak as a kitten. So it paid a big dividend. Absolutely. Because I felt, I felt like I was doing something, and that's part of what being resilient is. It's having so, a plan, setting goals, asking for help from people that are respectful. Key is respectful and non-judgmental and then implementing it to move forward. So we are down to our last two minutes. So I want to make sure if we can, because you just started giving tips on what that means to you, what your program means to you. So with that, 
two minutes that we have. Number one, I want to make sure that our listeners know where to find you. So let's talk about that. And then within the remaining time until we close the show, if you can give us tips on how do we find that resiliency? How do we use it? Whatever tips you feel that you can give us okay. um, and sources where they can go to find you, please. Okay. Well, people can find me on the web if they look up michaelhballard.com. So M-I-C-H-A-E-L-H and Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D.com. They'll find me. They'll find me on uh, Facebook as well as Michael H. Ballard. And uh, they can find me at Twitter at Resilient Michael, just no L. In the old days, Twitter only allowed so many letters, so Resilient Michael with no L. And uh, join me there, and we tweet out some uh, inspiration and some uh, can-dos. But uh, how to be more resilient? Well, I'd start with how have you allowed yourself to be defined? Don't judge. Just observe. And as a being an observer or attaining what some experts would say is the witness level, It's amazing how fast we can start to clear out the clutter over the weeks and months of practice. And it takes weeks and months. There's no instant pill to be resilient. And then with the right fuel, it also helps. So start with your self-definition. Purge and merge and celebrate. I don't think enough people celebrate what they're good at. Mm -hmm. Take a look at joy. In a world that's filled with negativity, one expert told me years ago that 81% of the messaging people give themselves is stated in the negative. So not congratulations, Jennifer, as having pink as a theme in your life, but why pink? (laughs) You know, it's a very interesting story, Michael, that my studio is the shade, a certain shade of pink that I just like. It makes me happy. I'm not a blue girl. I am a pink girl. It's a very specified pink. And what I did not know was picking, it's like a medium pink. And after I painted everything, got all the accessories in this very mid pink, um, long story short, because we've got a wrap, um, I wound out that it was a color of love and a color for women in weight loss. (laughs) Not even knowing it, which is self-directed that way. You, my friend, we have so much to talk about. I'd love to see if we can have you on again. Thank you so much for your time today, Michael. Thank you, thank thank you. you. So, again, Michael H. Ballard, uh, he's our resiliency tour coach. Please look him up on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, et cetera. And we are at the top of the hour. We want to say thank you, thank you again. And you listen to Fit Your Style today. We're on every Wednesday, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, coaching you to do what's right for your health wellness and happiness to become your very personal best. Have a great night.